jump in, so I'll just start the recording. I'll like to announce it. And so we, I, I think we have a quorum, and we can call the hangout to order. <laughs> yeah. So, Stephen, there, what was uh, – I don't think we've met before either. How, how are you? Oh, doing good. And what brings you to the IDT hangout? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just sort of looking into the program because okay. I'm thinking about – enrolling next year so wow thinking about yeah because i want to get into technical instruction i'm into it okay so i so, work at hospice of central new york and i'm an it support technician and i eventually want to teach it so you say so, it and i like was information technology yeah, yeah. You know, what do you mean by technical that? classes like Networking classes, computer classes, stuff okay. like that. That's sure. fine. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, welcome. And so, this is the first of our um, series of IDT hangouts. And I usually don't bring an agenda, but this being the first day of school, I always like to make sure that anybody who people, folks feel that they're registered for the right classes, and if you've got questions about the other classes or something like that. John, I think you're pretty well set. We ch chatted about that, I hope, so <laughs> you can't change. And <laughs> are you, you're, you've got, I think, three classes or, or, or two? I can't Ten. remember two. Okay, which ones did you end up with? Um, information, information design and visual thinking are the two. Okay. Yeah, so, um, and at some point, I wouldn't be surprised if um, others showed up, but it was... Um, I can't recall if they said they were going to be, be in town for the day or not, or if they, I can't remember if they said they were coming. So I didn't really, I never asked for reservations. So, um, yeah. So anybody see anything um, cool this week out in the world, the, the, the digital world? This week, not so much. Last week, um, well, that's what I meant. Last my week, husband sorry. and I watched Werner Hertz, Herzog's yeah. a new documentary, Lo and Behold, and I highly recommend it. I mean, it may be territory that's quite familiar to everybody, I don't know, but it was really interesting. It was like, a, it was a typical Werner Herzog narrative, but about the internet somehow. So, And, and he interviewed Ted Nelson, and it was, it was really nice. Yeah, he did, and and it was a very positive. But Ted Nelson, see, I did the you rest know, of the names that kind of thing really wait, captured wait. Ted Nelson. Yeah, until you said Ted Nelson, I, the other names that didn't resonate with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Werner Herzog, Her Her you know, is that <laughs> more more known for his a little bit strange independent films, but has turned a bit more toward documentary. Okay. And. So it's really, it's really good and to see uh, Ted Nelson get a chance to talk about his work without kind of any kind of really negative charge was nice. So. Okay, here's the, I think this is what, you, this is the one you mean, right? Well, that's from the Stanford Daily. What's the, lo and behold, that's right, okay. Lo and behold, yeah. See, now usually... I should I should ask your opinion of this. Usually, like if I'm doing this in a class, instead of that first link, I would send this out. Yeah. So I usually send that to a class. Yeah. Um, there's some background noise. Is that? It might be me. So what I'm going to do is mute myself for a moment. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um. If not, we're going to see it's Steven. <laughs> so, Steven, if you go ahead and mute, I'm going to mute you just for a second. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, if you to push to talk mode, if that's okay with you. That me? Is anybody else getting feedback, or is it just me? No, I don't, I don't hear anything. Okay, I'm fine. Hello, Donald. How you doing? 
good, sir, and yourself? Very good. Nice to um, hear you again. At least I don't know if we're seeing you. I'm not seeing you, but um, welcome to the uh, IDT Hangout. We're just uh, chatting about what's new in the world these days. So, um, But I always want to make sure that if you're just jumping in, if you had any specific questions or something like that that you wanted to make sure we chatted about, that you have a chance to throw that into the mix quickly. No, nothing particular. You're good to go. Okay, now remind me, you're um, Delhi, right? Correct. Right. And so, Donald, now it's a little weird because we're sitting in a virtual room, but on my screen, to the left of you, Donald, is that guy there that says his name's Steven. <laughs> I don't know where he, where he is on your screen, but he's to your left on mine. Um, and he's another IT guy. Um, who's kind of drifting towards IDT maybe at some point. And so at some point you might have some, uh, he might, might have something to say about the relevance of the IDT program to somebody who's more coming from that, ID, from that IT background, you know, more of a technical IT background. I don't know what you've been finding in the past couple semesters. If you think that the, the stuff we talk about is relevant to your field, um, it's, um, we have a whole department just in IDT. We have three or four people right now. That's all they do is do what we talk about right here. We have our websites and about getting customers or, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah, but not so much the networking folks, right? Uh, the networking folks re are really kind of separated from the IDT folks. Yeah, so the, the hardware stuff. Stephen, if you were talking about the hardware types, that the program doesn't tend to have a whole lot to say of relevance to that, I think, is what Donald's saying, to that crowd. We support each other, but we're two separate groups. Yeah. So anyway. there's, a, there's a line there between them. Right. So, um, yeah, and the um, – uh, Angela was, was telling us about a, the, the film. So what was the take on the internet from that, from that documentary that I just threw into the chat? Uh, I don't know if I have tried to sum it up, you know. Uh, I mean, it's Werner Herzog, so he, he kind of um, is speculating on the future of it, of the internet, and... I think he's looking at this sort of grandiose picture of its long-term potential for good or ill for humanity. Um, you know, so they get into things like um, what would be, what would be uh, the consequences of a solar flare, for example, on, on a world where we were highly dependent on, on the internet. Um, like if you had heating, mm -hmm and cooling systems or cars dependent on the internet and suddenly the internet was unusable, uh, what would happen? <laughs> so those kinds of questions okay. come up. And what did, what did, so Ted Nelson is my hero. <laughs> he's like, so, because he's the, uh, okay. yeah. he's the intellectual guy. I think of him as the sort of intellectual godfather of hypertext. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so what did he have to say about it? Do you remember or no, I'll have to watch it myself, huh? <laughs> You know, he didn't spend a super long time with any individual, but he, he kind of gives you a vignette, right? Right. right. So you got a little, a little glimpse of Ted Nelson's world, and he was very sympathetic toward Ted Nelson um, and kind of let you see a, a glimpse into where the origin of his thinking was with fluidity as a child and kind of imagining um, what communication might be like and how it might flow, going back all the way to – vision of water as a, as, a, as a little kid. It was really interesting because um, it let you see that here was like more of a poetic mind as opposed to some of the people Werner Herzog was a little less sympathetic toward later on who kind of ended up looking strange. Um, it was interesting. You That's know? cool. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. That, 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 um, um, that, sensibility i guess i might say that that sort of a literary awareness a um yeah. um a, 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 or i think um ryan ryan lazardi would 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 bring a lot of those kinds of ideas to his work you know because it's a critical perspective 
And so Ryan's a, Ryan comes from more of that crew. And Daryl Lee, um, he offers courses from time to time in the program, and he's a, a critical theorist as well. Um, and so you might get, if those kinds of questions interest you, yeah. um, you want to pursue research or topics or papers, then you kind of head in those directions. Um, and I think that the digital literature, I don't know, but um, but yeah, if, if, if you want to sort of push on some of those themes, you can probably um, definitely bring them to Ryan's attention. Um, I, I think that's the kind of stuff that he works on and thinks about all the time. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Okay, that's really useful to know. Yeah, so, so Donald, which classes are you registered for this semester? Oh, you gotta unmute yourself. It's a push to talk system, Donald. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was reading uh, the five thirty four syllabus a little bit there while we were I was listening. Yeah, it's kind of dumb flipping there. No, that's good. I do the same, right? No, so I'm about to start reading while you're talking. No, so, so which you're in five thirty four? Yes. Sorry about that. No, no, no. Yeah. It, it, uh, so you do one at a time too, right? Yes. Yes, I'm on the like twelve year plan. Yeah. Six years, come on, it's uh, six years, then. yeah, six years, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the um, you develop long term relationships with students because when they're the six years, and it's it's nice, it's yeah. Um, so 534 is the is the um, that's the, the uh, design class, right? With um, Professor Khan, yeah, so he teaches the first half and Salmon teaches the second half. Okay, I'm not familiar with them. Yeah, so that's not really clear when you see it yet. But anyway, that's what's going to happen, I believe, pretty much. <laughs> okay, it's it's a little different than I'm used to type stuff, but yeah, sounds yeah. interesting. John, you took that class? Yeah, I did. That's exactly what will happen. Is uh, Dr. Khan will teach the first half, and then Professor Salmon will teach the second half. Um, Dr. Khan will cover a lot of the fundamental uh, principles, and then Professor Salmon will take that to uh, where you apply it to a project. Uh, it's, it's a great class. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I should take that class actually, because I don't know how to make like pretty things <laughs> and think about it. And then, not that that's what you make in that class, but I don't know, I don't think visually, I only think in terms of like text and code. And uh, if you ever see any websites or graphics that I've done, you'll see exactly. <laughs> I don't know if you, my pretty, that was a pretty lame graphic on Facebook, you gotta admit. I don't know if you noticed my graphic on Facebook um, advertising this. Oh, the the screen, the the screen grab. So screens, yeah, yeah, yeah. My theory yeah, there is, if you can't make good graphics, make really bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a story that goes behind that. I was hired really, really early on to develop some content for a political science web textbook in the mid '90s. Um, but they didn't pay me to do the graphics. So I did all the content and I found the ugliest buttons I could possibly find knowing full well they'd never used them. And they used them. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so, so Donna, you, so you don't, yeah. Is that, is that kind of different from you too, right? You don't, you don't make graphics usually, right? No, no. So it's totally out of, I'm more of a code person, CLI, right. command line intro. Yep. You run so it. You run at a command line? A lot of the Cisco stuff. A lot of the switches oh. is all command line. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot, of the, a lot of the call manager type stuff is starting to go web, uh -huh. but uh, a yeah. lot of the meat and potatoes is CLI. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So the tiddly wiki thing that I've been living in for a couple of years, I just started using a command line interface to that which I didn't even, I mean, I sort of knew existed, but I've been playing, so it's like, I, so I'm looking at a command line again, sort of run, which I haven't seen for many, many years. It's kind of weird. We still have a bunch of old Nortel type stuff laying around, and that's all, you know, you type it in and you look up to make sure it's correct before you hit the enter button, otherwise. Mm -hmm. huh. Angela, yeah. do, you, do you do code at all, or like, do you ever play in the code world, Angela? Um. <laughs> I mean, since I've had no choice at times. I don't consider myself super strong there, but um, because part of the work that I've done over the last few years is was working for a 
specific website that does media research. And we had a, a sort of user facing um, game driven research system that people could play. And so I had to create content for that and I had to create markets It's basically a prediction market and then on the other side I had to take that data and mm. analyze it across diff we added more more things over time different, yeah. but, uh, but was it testing. was your but, work code based yeah, yeah um well yeah anytime that I created something that somebody had to see there was code yeah it's it's it strange how code creeps so, into various because it people. wasn't it wasn't so yeah some and then I've just tried on my own to kind of get a little bit the familiarity with um, you know what does Java really look like and you know um, yeah. a little bit of Python just to have a sense of what is this stuff you know but I'm not yeah no not I think super conversant. yeah I think increasingly you have to be able to at least see it yeah you know and at least not be afraid of it so yeah mm. it, uh, I don't want it to look like gibberish to me. It's like if I look at certain foreign languages, I at least have an idea of what's going on in them, and I want it to be more like that. Yeah. So, um, so I had the pleasure of working with both Donald and John this summer. And um, that, what would, your project was pretty cool. Do you want to talk briefly about it, Donald, what, what you did in the, over that summer one? You must be talking about John. <laughs> no, you no, were, we said you. <laughs> no, you don't have to. It's, I was just curious. I had a project for me. I just wrote it. I just read it. I'm mute again. I'm on mute again. Yeah, I was working up the, the UUAP yeah. angle tracking setup. <laughs> it, it, it's a little different because. I am in a union, I've been in a union for the last 30 years on and off, but uh, looking at it from the other side is quite different. It's, it's interesting. Well, I thought the idea of, you know, how you were going to like push out stuff to the union members and the kind of stuff that you thought was going to be relevant to them was pretty cool. It, 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 it's different because when you, as you know, we, went back and forth a few times that when you look at it from working for the union or that you're a union member, there's a line there. And sometimes I was a little confused about, okay, um, am I looking at it as a union person or a person that's actually working in the union office? So there was, you know, there was a little quirks there that right. so the, I enjoyed it. Yeah. The, so, um, Angela and Steven, so in, in that class, each of the, everybody um, essentially wrote a social media strategy that was going to be pitched towards what we called a community of practice. And so I always thought that Donald's project was about the union members, right? Because that's who would pay, I mean, that's who they would want to talk to. So I thought it was kind of intriguing as a union member myself to begin to imagine, well, what would my union start tweeting to me about emerging technologies? You know, under what circumstances? I thought that was a really kind of interesting space for a union to occupy. Um, so I was kind of, in I was intrigued by that. It's because, I don't know, are you a member of a union, John? No, I'm not. Um, I don't know if they're... No, I don't think you would know if you're a member. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, def I definitely am not. Uh, when I was a teacher, I, I certainly was. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. in technical writing, I don't think there really are any unions. There's professional organizations. There's uh, a guild. There's guilds, right? There's there guilds, would, yeah. There'd be guilds. Yeah, I've worked in companies uh, where there there definitely was a union presence, but right. uh, our department wasn't unionized, so. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so this is all, uh, yeah, so, but I, and John, your project was pretty cool too. Yeah, I really enjoyed that summer class. Um, it, wow, it was a lot of work in a short amount of time, but uh, I learned a lot. Um, so as, as Dr. Schneider mentioned, we, we did a community of practice. Mine was the field of technical communication, which is the field I'm in. And then the association I chose was a uh, society for technical communication. So uh, I, I put together a blog 
where I wrote um, a series of blogs based on the five emerging technologies that we studied. And then the, the other half of the project was to cross promote it using a, a micro blog. So I chose Twitter. So um, I set up my WordPress blog to link right to a Twitter account. And then when I published a blog, it went right to Twitter. And then, you know, we imagined that we had people from, so I live outside so of Rochester. you published your blog, it went right to Twitter? Right, yeah. So I, I automatically had it set up to feed right to, uh, to Twitter. Right. So that was from WordPress to Twitter. That's like a, a Twitter. I think that I can never remember who, who owns the widget. Is it Twitter who owns the widget that pulls from WordPress, or does WordPress own it and they push to Twitter? It's the Twitter widget that you install on WordPress. So, but WordPress it's still pushes. Yeah, WordPress WordPress pushes. Yeah. yeah. So then the idea was that the follow any anyone from the local STC chapter would would follow me on Twitter, and then they would right. get these blogs uh, via Twitter. Then you could click on the link in the in the tweet and so read. Do you think that works in the real world? I mean, does anybody? Angela, are you a Twitter user? Stephen, are you a Twitter user? I've sort of dabbled in it, but it's... I kind yeah. of have gotten to the... Yeah. I don't know. I guess I just can't get into the idea of tweeting everything I do throughout the day, you know? Well, that's, that's like one of a zillion facets yeah. of Twitter. Yeah, I would agree with yeah. you there. I probably wouldn't follow you if you did that. Yeah. <laughs> Angela, are you a Twitter yeah. reader? Twitter account. I What's read... Thing, I, I do follow Sorry. some things on Twitter, but I'm not, I don't do a lot of tweeting because I don't have anything I need to tweet about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it is useful. I mean, I did some personal <laughs> blogging for a while and, and uh, pushed those posts onto Facebook. And I would say that was where most of my traffic yeah. came from. So yeah, I mean. It, I, yeah. I think Twitter's pretty cool. I've taken to using it as my main news um, aggregator, I guess. Okay. So, I would say maybe, hmm. I don't know, I, I don't know, I'll just rough guess, I probably read 20 stories a day or something like that on the news, and I bet you that 10 to 12 of them, maybe 14, come via Twitter. And the others I might go to the source and pick up there, but, I, but increasingly I don't have to go to the post because I follow enough of their reporters that I read anyway that, I, that they just come to me by Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I kind of went crazy when I set up my, my Twitter account for the summer class. I just started following a yeah. whole bunch of news uh, outlets, reporters, uh, people in my own field. <laughs> and now my phone is going off all the time with the little tweets. So it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I don't do that. I don't, there's no audible, but yeah, no, that's yeah. crazy. You can't, I thought you were supposed to do that when I started. You, that, that doesn't work. That's like self-destructive. And you have to give up yeah. the idea that you're going to read everything. Oh, I, I don't think I, heard, I, I don't have yeah. time to read it all. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll skim it during lunch, um, but yeah, maybe I'll get a chance to read one or two, but hey, they're still there. I can always scroll through them and, and find somebody I want to read about. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm just like picking, picking it up. So to me, the action is like you kind of jump in where you left off and then you just start scrolling and when you see something, you read it. And then when you're done or you have to go, you just move on. And then you come back. And it, so it's like, it's a very different, um, this would be a good kind of question. It's a very different consumptive activity than going to a news site to seeing what the news is. You know, it doesn't tell you, but you have to have faith that if there's anything big, it's going to show up in Twitter eventually anyway, probably <laughs> faster. So. Well, like today with Gene Wilder's passing, I think I saw that first on Twitter then before I saw it on any, on any of the news outlets. There you go. See, you're right on top of it. So, yeah. well, listen, I think that um, we'll hang out again in two weeks if folks are interested. Um, and I'll post the, t the time. We're going to try to move this to, um, to collaborate. Um, so it might not be a Zoom link, but it might also, but it might be Zoom. I haven't figured out if I can get collaborate to work yet. Um, and we'll um, start. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask. I wanted to close with a question. If would you think that inviting different kinds of guests would make sense? And one of the things I was thinking about was either alumni or people present on different things. But if you've got any ideas of people that you'd like to sort of see 
to hang out with, let me know. I think it would be interesting to, yeah, either hear from alumni or other um, faculty members. But what I think would also be really interesting is to hear if they're, if they're willing to any um, thesis or project candidates that might be willing to kind of give their perspective on that that process. Because we're, if we see this program to the end, we're all going to be going through it. So any heads up that we can get. I will mention that to the four or six thesis students that are in the class. I think that's a good idea. Well, I'll just schedule them. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think we did that last year, come to think of it. Yeah, this, and to be honest, this is the first hangout I've been able to yeah. attend. No, I think that, yeah, I think, yeah, we, I usually do that. I usually, um, just when, as people begin to have a topic, I think they, they appreciate the opportunity to kind of present it and bounce around some ideas with people. So we'll definitely start seeing that. And, um, and I've got some different alumni that I'd like to, um, bring back and um, in fact I should share this I uh, I'll share this link with you now um, um, and I'll share my screen with you um, desktop two um, it, it, so I, is that being shared yet or there it is you seeing the 9-11 blogging yeah. yeah, and I'll put the link in the chat. Um, I'll just share this in that I was, um, it occurred to me recently that this is the 15th anniversary of 9-11. And, um, and then I was working on a project for the 10th anniversary, which seems like just yesterday. So I was like, oh, this was, and then so I said, God, I've got to find this thesis. This is um, Andre Lata. <laughs> thesis from 2012 and I just think it's one of the most beautiful things I've seen and so I just I'm going to start sharing it more often with people so what these are um do you remember you guys have probably seen word clouds right um well they were new once <laughs> um and in 2000 when did he do this he did this in 2012 yeah 212 they were newer <laughs> um and than they are now. And these are two different kinds, Tagzito and Wordle. And then these are the texts of blog posts from 9-11 and 9-12, 2001. And so um, that's the text of the post. And so, and these are the, and so they're just beautiful and fascinating. Um, and, uh, and I just think I just, I'd want to put this up onto the, uh, the, the little, um, video of our archive, uh, of our hangout, I mean, in case we can archive it so I can say, oh, you got to go check out Andre's thesis. So, and I'll share a link with that in the uh, chat. But um, this is, um, I was just thinking about it because I was thinking about different alumni that I could invite back. And I, I, I'm going to see if Andre's still around um, to kind of talk a little bit about this. And I think that would be a good 9-11, 15th anniversary tie-in. Um, this is based, by the way, this work is based on an archive of 9-11 websites that I've been involved with since 9-11. Um, and we have 30,000, 40,000 websites archived starting on September 11th, September 12th, September 13th, 2001, maybe the 12th, running through December 1st. And it's just an amazing collection of, you were, um, Angela talked a little bit about the internet in the beginning, about the future of the internet. Um, 2001 and the internet was a very different time than today, 15 years ago, and blogging was brand new. So these are super pioneers, and it was just, it's just, and it's, and it's if anyone's ever interested in digging through archival materials of 9-11, they're there. I have a thesis that there are, that more people learn to post and share photographs in the days and weeks after 9-11 than at any other time in human history. Because <laughs> um, it was just a, con you know, a, a conflation, a coincidence of, uh, digital photography just took hold. People just started having sort of a level of access that they could share photographs, and then there were sites that you could share with. And so buried in this archive are some probably tens of thousands of photographs if you could dig them out. So anyway, hey, thank you guys for hanging out, and um, I will catch you later. Um, John, I'll catch up with you in a few minutes. Okay. We'll go back to that, okay? Angela, it's nice to see you again, and, um, um, and um, send me an email, okay? So I've got it. Okay, and Stephen, it's very nice to meet you, and, and feel free to drop in again. 
And Steve, I'm here too. I don't know if you noticed. I, this is I, it. I did not. You did. You have to talk. Well, I just arrived. Oh, okay. We were almost leaving. I noticed. <laughs> like, you know, you're not here. So, oh God, now we have to stay. Oh. <laughs> Say well, to everybody, Catherine. I did. I really. I didn't see you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> I feel terrible. I didn't hear you. Everybody. No, I just got here maybe three minutes ago and, oh. and was really enjoying those wordles. And, aren't, they, um, aren't they beautiful? They're fascinating. And you see something like ash in there and you think like, ah, oh, you know, it just brings you right back to those, to that day and that time. It's just, I, I don't just, think about it much otherwise, you know? No. And I've got to, um, I'm going to print these and put them up in our building. Mm -hmm. That just, sounds good. Yeah, I've wanted yeah. to do that for many years, but I just don't, you know, I don't. I, there's many yeah. things I want to do. <laughs> um, Catherine, meet, you've met John, I think, right? Hi, John. Hello. I know the Gene, but I don't know if I've ever seen him in person before. Hello. Probably, no, I took a summer class from you last year. Yes. And nice. I think you've met Donald before. And Angela. And Angela, you've not met Hi, everybody. Before. I'm brand new. <laughs> Well, welcome. Thank but remember you. the other day I said I went to orientation. It was fabulous. Yes. And I saw three students. I saw Marco today in my office, and Angela shows up on my desktop today. So That's I see good. two or three of those that were in the orientation with us today. So. Mm -hmm. um, Wonderful. Well, we'd love to get to know you, and um, and that goes for everybody. <laughs> so. I'm really happy that we're going to be doing this hangout this semester so we can spend more time together. Yeah, we have to look at your photographs maybe. Cool. We'll schedule that. Sure, anytime. Right. Um, so can we continue departing now? <laughs> okay, bye everyone. I hope <laughs> is no, anyone you guys have any, are we all set? Is that good? All right, we'll catch you all later. Okay, bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. bye.